Germany has a new head of delegation, and her name is Carola Kanza, and she has big plans to reform Germany's Eurovision selection for 2016. The first big announcement came today, and she said that the club concert will no longer take place. Of course, the club concert in recent years was a concert for a series of potential wild cards. These are unestablished acts. They would sing live in a concert venue, the Germans would vote, and in the past two years, one of them would end up winning the national final at which they later competed. You guys, she hasn't made it clear if she's getting rid of the wild card altogether or whether she's just get rid of getting rid of like the concert in a club. Long story short, do you think Germany should have a wild card compete against established acts? No. Do tell, Corey, do tell. <laughs> See, I think the problem with it so far, or like for the last two years, is that they've had the club concert. One, that's given them extra publicity. And they've had to get voters through that. So they have the story, people know the song. And then it's like a thing with television, like it builds up a story and a relationship and like the reality TV journey, where they've this journey from club concert and unknowns, and then they're competing against big name acts and defeating them and then getting to Eurovision and it makes a great TV story but it doesn't make a great Eurovision act. Absolutely. Just to quickly review, in 2014, the unknown group Aleza came 18th with the song Is It Right? It was not. It was very wrong. And in 2015, Anne Sophie, who didn't actually win but was runner-up and went to Eurovision, she came dead last with zero points with her song Black Smoke. Luis, <laughs> your thoughts? When they sent Anne Sophie, I mean, the second year in a row that the Wildcard won, uh, I thought it was all a bit of made up, just to give extra interest to the to the, their choice. They actually put all the paraphernalia with all the all the other artists, the the, the well known artists, but then it ends winning the 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 wild card. I mean, it can happen one year, two years. It's a bit too much. It was a bit too much for me. I think I, I don't know if it's if it's really something effective for Germany. I mean, if they want to put a wild card or whatever, they can just do it. Like Sweden does, for instance. A radio show or whatever. You know what, exactly. I like the fact that there is a wild card and an opportunity for a new artist, but Porig is right that there's too much exposure for that artist. Like in Sweden, they the wild card wins Svenska Toppen, and then he, but there's not all this hype. It's not like this reality TV show journey, and it, it, there's a huge amount of time between the Svenska Toppen and then the actual Melfest, so people forget about this person who won. And um, it's more fair for everyone, I think, because like you want the best song to go, and you know, even among the established acts, there will be people competing who the general people do not know. Um, and so why give the wild card such a huge advantage, like all this exposure, like, oh my god, you won, oh my god. You know, it's just, look what's happened. I mean, I'm sorry, Aleza and Sophie. I mean, I also think it's bad for them because then they go to Eurovision and like they have songs that, I don't know, I feel like it hurts them, like their personal brand. Whereas like an established artist will go to Eurovision, they know what music works for them, because they're so established. And then regardless of how they do, at least the song fits and it works and it's great. But when you're like a wild card, you're on this big stage, you don't necessarily know what's best for you. Am I making any sense? Yeah. Amen. But, but then I think yeah. as well, having such high profile wild cards turns away big name established acts. Because every year people are throwing around like Helen Fisher's name, for instance. And she's not going to do it if there's a risk that she's going to get beaten by these unknowns with an absolutely useless song. While she'll have a song that record music execs would probably have gone over for hours and hours and spent thousands on. And then just to watch it get thrown out in the first half because the Germans have this weird system. And let Eliza with their song that's just three minutes of repetition and rhetorical questions go ahead of her. So like the, the wild card like, it damages the German brand as well as their own brand. It makes it look like everything is fixed from before the, the contest. I mean, it was really strange that last year Andreas Kummert won and then he withdrew actually to go with Hans Sophie, who was the, the wild card. Uh, I mean, and I, I really wasn't into the artists last year, but in, 20, in 2014, sorry, I thought there were really great artists there. I mean, there was Angelic, there was uh, Oceana, I guess, the baseballs. They, they were really great artists. And they got all beaten by Eliza, whose songs was just okay. 
it wasn't bad, but it was okay. And then, and that's, we have the results on the Eurovision. Uh, I think, in a way, it made good to Germany that Dan Sophie finished last with zero, with zero points because they, I mean, I think they have reacted to that. That it's not really good to have all the wild card just for promotion of her or whatever. And on Eurovision.de, with this announcement, they have an interview with Konza, and she's asked, how do you explain the poor result of Anne-Sophie? And she says it's a tough question. Well, let me tell you this, it is not. <laughs> she did not do well, because it just didn't work. The song wasn't right for her, it was too sassy and soulful. I mean, it was written by Ella Iyer, and that's just too much <clears throat> for Anne Sophie, who like she has swagger, but not the right kind of swagger for that particular song. And I've just got to highlight the night before the final, we had a jury review, and I said this will finish last with zero points. Everybody thought I was crazy. Well, you know what? I wasn't crazy. Roll that clip. Now my number twenty-seven, my last place, goes to Germany's Anne Sophie. Her album is called Silver Into Gold, but I'm sorry, this is Silver Into Brass, this is Silver Into Plastic. I think she's lost in the black smoke and she thinks that she has the soul of an Aretha Franklin. She thinks she has the bootyliciousness of a Beyonce, but she has neither. I feel like she's a bit of an imposter on this song. She's somewhat, I mean she's got a great voice, don't get me wrong, beautiful voice, but it doesn't fit this style. She just comes off as pedestrian. It ends up as bad karaoke. I know that Germany, you know, knows how to do staging, but even that here, it doesn't, it's just boring. It's black and gold and it's boring and Germany will finish last with me. And I think another point from the same interview is someone asked her about Lena and how Lena was an unknown and she did so well. But Lena had the backing of Stefan Rapp, who was like the German equivalent of Simon Cowell or someone. So she was always going to do well because they had the money and the backing to give her decent songs. Whereas, like, it's fine and unknown, but the unknowns that we're getting have mediocre songs. Yeah, actually, Roman Love from 2012, Roman Love, he was also unknown. I mean, they just found the whole package this those three years but they haven't these two years this those last two years yeah. and this, i believe this. between 2010 and 2012 they were doing the unser song fear format where they had songs yeah. singing and multiple artists would sing the songs and in germany that really worked i mean lena got paired with satellite Dang. taken by a stranger and roman love was standing still i mean they should resurrect that i don't know why they got rid of it yeah because actually uh, roman love ended eighth which was better than Lina's second attempt, which, uh, I mean, it's not really a question of results. And the next year, Cascada, the popular art, the super popular artist with everyone, with, I mean, uh, 18th place, was it? Was 21. 17th, 18th, I guess? 21. With 18 points. Hey, <laughs> Dorne.